good afternoon everybody in previous lecture we had seen types of burners or types of flames used in flame photometry uh, this is the sample atomized means we converted our sample molecules into into atoms and then we analyzed it okay then we analyzed it now what happens is instead of flame there are other methods also for converting your sample into atoms okay so what you can see in front of you is different types of fuel and oxygen mixture and the burning velocity in centimeter per second here are the flow rate centimeter per second that flow rate is of that mixture which contains to the flame uh, moving on to the next part i hope uh, it is not uh, surprise for you that there are atomizers which are non flame also see here in types of flame atomizers we have seen what is total consumption burner and pre mix burner now there are non flame atomizers also which are heated graphite tube atomizer and carbon filament atomizers please don't use no. word atomizer they are not atomizers they are atomizers they prepare atoms okay let's start with the first Uh, set of uh, non flame atomizers they are called as carbon atomizers we will see that how carbon is used in the construction of these atomizers and they are also called as electro thermal atomizers that carbon assembly that we have is heated that's why word thermal and the heating is brought about by electricity that's why the name electro thermal atomizers let's see what they are in 1961 uh, very at least 60 years back uh, bivalov built an atomizer using a carbon rod heated with an electrical discharge so can you imagine a rod a rod is something which is hollow inside and cylindrical okay heated with electrical discharge so it has to be connected with electrical circuit and when electricity passes that passes through that carbon rod because of the resistance of the rod itself it will get heated the rod will get heated now this is more sensitive than flame atomizers but was difficult to control enough to provide quantitative data the meaning the heating of the rod it could not be controlled at that time when it was built okay so basically the use of heat I was converting the solution into first gaseous molecules and then breaking down the molecule into atoms that heat was utilized in converting the molecules into atoms but it was difficult to control the heating process so quantitative data was difficult to obtain qualitative data whether a certain element is present or not that type of data was obtainable now this method was refined by west masman and robinson and they developed two such equipments heated graphite tube atomizer also called as tubular graphite furnace so by the name itself you can understand it is its construction is like furnace okay and the second type carbon filament atomizer it is also called as carbon rod or carbon cup atomizers let's start with the first one carbon atomizers electrothermal atomizers the first type now in each atomizer the process used is similar so we are going to use the similar process we are basically going to heat carbon in the rod format a small sample usually order of 2 to 30 microliter you can imagine how small the sample is 2 to 30 microliter is loaded onto carbon atomizer so sample is injected or placed on a graphite tube tube through opening okay now understand the construction this is cross section of the cylinder at the end of the cylinder there are quartz windows so that electromagnetic radiation can pass through it okay it is not mr it is emr electromagnetic radiation and same here emr r is missing here and e is missing here. anyway so electromagnetic radiations are entering from one side passing through the other side simple here on the graphite tube the cylinder is made up of graphite and it is connected to electrical connection so when electricity passes through it graphite will 
heat heat will be transferred to the sample which is a solution ultimately it will be converted into atoms and electromagnetic radiation will pass through those atoms if the energy of the wavelength of it matches with the energy difference between the two levels of energy of the atom it will absorb that energy so we are placing the sample coming to the process i i just explain you what happens so we are introduced sample in first point second it is then warmed gently to remove the solvent so solvent is removed leaving behind the residue of the sample the temperature is then increased under controlled condition to ash the sample okay sample is converted to its ash by heating and removed most of the organic material present so whatever carbon hydrogen and oxygen is there in the sample is removed by converting it into ash finally the sample is heated rapidly to very high temperature to cause atomization so the ash that is produced the ash which is left on the graphite tube over here it will be heated very rapidly first two steps are gradual the next step is rapid so the rapid increase in the temperature to very high temperature will cause atomization the free atoms are vaporized from the carbon atomizer into the optical path where the absorption is measured so in this region absorption is measured now the process of atomization is extremely fast and must be rigidly controlled so from ash to atomization should be very fast observe this diagram on x axis you have time on y axis you have temperature from zero time where suppose there is room temperature to drying the process is slow it is taking say approximately 60 seconds to dry the sample now please remember that the quantity of sample solution is very low okay so 60 seconds is more than enough for drying of the solvent then next 20 25 seconds are utilized in charring or converting sample molecules to ash and in next say 3 to 4 seconds the temperature look at the rise in the temperature yahan tak temperature was approximately 500 degree celsius okay and from 500 degree celsius to almost 2000 degree celsius the temperature has increased in matter of few seconds okay so this has to be controlled carefully and this has to be rapid so coming to the point here the temperature program is therefore very carefully controlled with respect to both the time used for each section of the heating program this is called as heating program so time is uh, carefully adjusted and the temperature range involved in each section so how much temperature sh should be raised that is also predetermined now instrumentation the working so it will involve four stages i am still explaining this only uh, we are into Uh, the non flame atomizer ka construction and working there are four stages first is drying drying then pyrolysis that is converting into ash then third is atomization and after atomization whatever residue is remaining in that cylinder it has to be cleaned now this is done by running a sequential temperature program to perform the following say first step drying this is a low temperature drying to remove water or solvent without sputtering i hope you know what is sputtering i hope uh, at least some of you have at some point of time worked in a kitchen you heat a pan or some vessel without putting anything into it and then try to put a drop of water into it the drop will start dancing small droplet from that large drop will start sputtering around and even they will start dancing so that uh, can say the sizzling action is called as sputtering uh, then comes ashing the pyrolytic method in which temperature rises to 400 to 800 degree centigrade degree celsius matrix component and high boiling volatile compounds such as oils fat organics are removed so organic material is removed at the point of ashing carbon is removed now then comes atomization formation of atoms this is where the atomic vapor is formed with a rapid increase in the temperature up to 3000 degree celsius this is done very rapidly the radiation from a halo cathode lamp is directed through this vapor 
vapor of atoms and a single trace of absorbance versus time is measured the amount of energy absorbed is proportional to the atomic concentration now microliter quantities are used and analysis per time uh, analysis time per sample is 1 to 5 minutes now after this reading has been done there is cleansing now for cleansing uh, obviously one cannot go inside that small tube and clean with uh, a mop or something so we have to use some uh, some solvent some gases and something like that so let's see what is cleaning purge gas this is an internal stream of inert glass that flows through the tube to clean and carry away vapors from the sand from the sample matrix so basically it is a neutral gas it may be nitrogen or any other neutral gas then gas stop this is a programmable step that shuts down the gas flow in the sample chamber just 1 to 2 seconds immediately before atomization now i hope you can imagine that what what must be happening see there is continuous flow of gas going through the chamber and for few seconds the gas is stopped okay so then when the gas is stopped then after say I, i should tell you the cycle the diagram of the cycle this is atomization so over here somewhere the gas flow will stop and then after 1 to seconds the atomization will begin okay so at that point this provides a stabilized gas environment in the graphite tube increases the resilience time of the atom cloud and prevents atom loss from the tube and improves the signal output so basically when you stop that flow of gas through the tube we are making sure that atoms are remove uh, remaining in the path length for longer period of time so this is the principle of both the instrument we are going to study now this will be followed by both of them okay so let's start with heated graphite tube atomizer or simply called as graphite furnace let us observe the instrument this is the graphite tube it is cross section of that graphite tube there is one opening for introduction of the sample there is gas in the gas will enter the graphite tube and it will leave the graphite tube now the gas is also surrounding from both the sides huh? it is cross section so gas is surrounding everything now that is the neutral gas we are talking about which is continuously flowing okay now it is surrounded with a metal jacket through which water is passing through any gas what must be the uh, use of that water flow anybody sir for cooling excellent excellent yes make very good and i think shakil answered first very good yes. very good students so uh water is used for cooling so the smd should not get overheated from outside you need electrical connection also so there is one electric connection here one electric connection here then between the water jacket and the graphite tube there is insulating separation which is also creating a chamber in between this window is removable when window is removed you can put sample over here and the entire process will start okay the tube will look from outside like this this is the window optical path is entering this is exiting here at these two points you will connect the electrical circuit from here and here okay uh, first observe this diagram this animation and then observe this animation uh, you can if you are using pinch zoom onto this diagram and see what is happening see heating part has started uh, immediately uh, the sample is converted into vapor atom cloud will be forming in between and then electromagnetic radiation is passing through it and reading is been taken similar here electromagnetic radiation passing through see sample you can see sample now atom cloud has formed now electromagnetic radiation passing through it see sample introduced heating is done vaporization atomization observe it okay so this is the construction and we have already discussed the light source the atomized chamber electrical connectors or contact cylinders water cooling housing inert gas quartz window power supply detector let's move on to the next frame atomizer it is called as carbon rod or cup atomizers okay uh, 
uh, this is when uh, you can say let us understand this this one and then i will tell tell you what this is okay you can see there is sample cup over here and it is in a way protected like a chimney like structure and that chimney has a way for a electromagnetic radiation to pass through it then you have a carbon rod and that carbon rod is connected to electrical terminal made up of metal so i think this is probably the simplest arrangement you can see and it is very easy to understand now this arrangement is not that famous as you can see it is not a closed arrangement as the previous one now this chimney over here which i said is connected to inlet where argon gas passes through okay now this rod on a hole or uh, you can say a cup in that cup sample is introduced okay you can see this case okay, is also there but it is hidden behind this chimney okay and when electricity passes through this graphite rod it gets heated and all the processes we discussed steps those four steps are carried out now the temperature of the sample point is higher than the surrounding it avoids wastage of the sample so at the center of the carbon rod it gets heated at maximum so inner glass flow sample amount is small as usual organic compounds surrounding metallic analytes make it difficult to uh, make it difficult for sample to get uniformly heated so carbide formation uh, it happens due to refraction causing compounds then cyanide formation if nitrogen is present so let us compare the flame versus furnace in case of flames those two burners that we have seen large sample and large volume is required sample stay in the flame for shorter period of time in case of furnaces small sample volume is required 5 to 50 microliter sample stay longer in the path of electromagnetic radiation so it gives better results can be used to assess smaller sample volumes at low concentration uh, furnaces are comparatively expensive than flames and we need to take extra care to get a reproducible results it is difficult to get reproducible results there is needed for background correction also uh, background correction means you will get noise in your reading you need to correct those noise then it requires fast responding detectors now this question uh, now we are done with instrumentation now we are moving on to the interferences in flame photometry and interferences in atomic absorption spectroscopy as it was in case of uv that there were some problem with bell lambert's law and we discussed the shortcomings of the uh, bell lambert's law similarly over here also there are certain things happening when we take the reading we are going to discuss so what type of interferences are there in flame photometry there are three types of interferences spectral ionized and chemical in case of atomic absorption spectroscopy there are two types of interferences spectral and non spectral let us first start with interferences in flame photometry in that spectral in spectral again there are three subtypes let's first start with the subtype 1 under spectral now when we say spectral interferences it is related to the electromagnetic radiations of certain wavelengths so wavelengths which are getting measured and which are getting produced or absorbed in the process are interfering with each other so let us see what are they what are those interferences spectral interferences these interferences affect the spectral intensity or resolution intensity means specific wavelength we expect it to be present at higher intensity but it is present at lower intensity or vice versa and resolution suppose we want a wavelength of 320 nanometer to be measured but along with 320 there is 319 or 321 okay so like that there are several types of spectral interferences which can be explained as below the first type okay the first type of interference arises when two elements exhibit spectra which partially overlap 
and both emit radiation at some particular wavelength now in flame photometry your analyte is element atom so atoms of two element suppose atom a is giving four spectral lines and atom b is giving you three spectral lines and fourth line of first element a and say second line of element b it is overlapping its value is same so if when this happens uh, the first type of spectral interference happens now the detector cannot distinguish between the source of radiation and record the total signal that resulting in correct answer detector cannot distinguish whether a particular wavelength is coming from analyte a or analyte b it simply adds up the wavelength intensity from both the elements and gives you the resultant combined result which is incorrect such interferences are more common at high flame temperature because numerous spectral lines are produced at high temperature when the temperature of the flame is high all the atoms of the elements of different elements all of them are having high energy and they produce several lines so when there are several lines there is more probability that some of the lines will overlap with each other now for example the iron line at 324.73 nanometer overlaps with copper line of 324.75 nanometer look at how how close they are so now if such thing is happening see this is this is atom tra doesn't mean that the iron has only one line it has got other lines also maybe it has got some line around say uh, 500 nanometer and the other line of copper is at 450 nanometer so instead of selecting these two overlapping lines for getting for getting detected by the detector let us select some other wavelengths okay so uh, such interferences can be overcome by by taking measurements at an alternative wavelength which has no overlap so this is the simplest of the solution to the problem by removing the interfering element by extraction suppose you want to measure only copper you are not interested in iron so carry out certain extraction method so that all the iron is removed from the sample and then you are measuring your sample for copper then by use of calibration of the interfering element so you will construct suppose copper is to be measured and iron is interfering substance so for iron you calibrate the instrument you construct a calibration graph and for that particular concentration whatever reading you get for copper you subtract the reading the absorbance value for iron so you will get after subtraction absorption because of copper only but instead of do using this second and third method first method is highly recommended okay coming to the second type of spectral interference the second type of spectral interference deal with spectral lines of two or more elements which are close but their spectra do not overlap now this is related to resolution now the lines are distinct very close now what happens is uh, think about isolating that wavelength if you are using a filter filter do not allow passage of very narrow band of wavelengths for filter the band is generally wider so that is problem it will allow both lines to pass and reach to the detector now let's take to the second point this type of interference becomes a problem when a filter is used instead of what is what is better alternative to filter anybody to isolate a wavelength grating gratings can be used okay either everybody is sleeping or they are studying from tomorrow's paper theek hai as the device uh, i will repeat the point i will read it this again this type of interference become a problem when filter is used as the device to isolate spectral lines a filter may allow spectral lines separated by 5 to 10 nanometers to pass pass through the resulting an error in the analysis see 5 to 10 nanometer pass through is a very large pass through okay such interferences can be reduced by increasing the resolution of the spectral isolation system so basically what they are suggesting here they are suggesting to increase the resolution by addition of one additional filter 
one option or second option you can use gratings however the interference cannot be eliminated entirely due to the finite width of the spectral isolation system and a finite slit width in such system so this type of drawback will remain uh, will remain in the system okay third type of spectral interference the third type of spectral interference occurs due to the presence of continuous background which arises due to high concentration of salts in the sample especially of alkali and alkaline earth metals what happens is these alkali and alkaline metals they easily lose one electron and whatever whatever ion that is produced it has similar characteristic of atoms not of suppose it is suppose it is sodium okay sodium salt is there and sodium loses one electron and produces sodium ion so now cation will have its distinct spectral lines and if the salt concentration is sufficiently high enough it means that a, a person is wearing green color goggle or yellow color goggle so wherever he is looking he now uh, this happens because that organic solvent do not break down completely this type of interference can be corrected by using can where which is devoid of background signals so like i said if you know that so you of spectral interference okay this is very favorite question of examiner's paper setter they ask about interference because of ionization in flame photometry so in some cases high temperature flame may cause ionization of some of the metal ion for example in case of sodium it can be given as i just explained sodium loses electron and forms sodium ion the sodium ion possesses an emission spectrum of its own with frequency which are different from those of the atomic spectrum of sodium ions sodium atoms i'm sorry so sodium atom ka ek set of spectra aur sodium ion ka ek spectra hai atom aur ion now this duty says the radiant power of atomic emission now kya ho raha hai dekho suppose there are 100 atoms in the sample of sodium ideally what should happen all those 100 atoms should participate in the absorption but because of this ionization is taking place out of 100 say 20 are getting converted to ion so only 80 are absorbing so analyst or the detector will tell the analyst that only 80 atoms are present but actually 100 atoms are present so this is error that is introduced reading which is different than the actual reading this interference can be eliminated by adding large quantity of potassium salt to the standard as well as the sample solution now this will act similar with same logic as antioxidants so instead of sodium getting ionized potassium will get ionized and the reading of sodium will remain unchanged the addition of potassium salt suppresses the ionization of sodium as the potassium atom itself undergoes ionization due to low ionization energy ionization energy of it will get that extra energy and undergo ionization instead of sodium thus the sodium atom emission is enhanced this type of interference is restricted to alkali metals only now we are done with spectral we are done with ionized list what the third type chemical now this is very understandable we are putting many chemicals in heated condition and at high temperature they are bound to interact with each other and form new compounds and the original compounds uh, are expected to degrade totally to form atoms but the new compounds may interfere with this process i hope you can imagine that the chemical interferences arise out of reaction between different interferences and the analyte so these are of different types some of these are given below so we are going to see these three types the presence of certain anions such as oxalate phosphate it eliminate in a solution may affect the intensity of radiation emitted by an element resulting in serious analytical error now let us see how they are interfering for example calcium in the presence of phosphate ion forms a stable substance such as calcium phosphate 
which does not decompose easily we want calcium atom but this phosphate does not allow release of calcium because it is stable resulting in the production of lesser number of calcium atoms thus calcium signal is suppressed i hope this example is clear cut yes sir example is of determination of in the of sulfate forming insoluble barium sulfate type of interface can be removed either by addition of the anion or by using calibration curve second type ye first if humne dekha cation anion so there is cation of calcium ca plus and phosphate isme cation anion interference ho raha hai here also ba and so4 minus okay there is cation cation interaction also and this is very interesting type because they have no for that in many cases mutual interferences of cations have been observed resulting in reduced signal intensity of the element being in mind these interferences at the spec nature and the mechanism of such interferences is not well understood but they have just observed that if you put two certain types of cations together there is suppression in the signal thus for example aluminum interferences with calcium and magnesium also sodium and potassium show cation cation interference on one another third is oxide formation now we are operating at high temperature it is well that oxide formation will take place this type of interferences arise due to formation of stable metal oxide if oxygen is present in the flame resulting in the reduced signal intensity that metal oxide will not break and free metal for absorbance the alkaline earth metals are subject to this type of interference this type of interference can be eliminated either there are two ways by using very high flame temperature to dissociate the oxides so even if oxide is formed it is broken by using high temperature second option by using oxygen deficient environment to produce excited atom now imagine how is in case flame because presence of oxygen just quickly revise all this i'm going to change the slides your computer has started let's start with atomic absorption spectroscopy interferences there are two types spectral and non spectral in non spectral there are again three types matrix related chemical related and ionization related now interference is the phenomena you have dekha chalo so go on to spectral type spectral interferences are caused by presence of another atomic absorption line or molecule problem the main cause of background absorption presence and dissolved molecule of the matter that have tiny solid particles unvaporized solvent droplets or molecular species in the flame which may scatter in the wavelength region when this type of absorption overlaps with atomic absorption of the analyte background absorption occurs now how to overcome this problem first we can take the absorbance of the background and then subtract it is reading and second we have seen in terms of flame also we will simply select another wavelength using another line then coming to the non spectral in non spectral first matrix when a sample is more viscous different surface tension than that of standard it can result in the differences in sample uptake the nebulization efficiency i will read it out first then i will explain such interferences are minimized by matching as closely as possible metric composition of the standard and sample suppose you are measuring sodium content in honey okay honey mein sodium ho sakta hai potassium ho sakta hai you are measuring the content of sodium in honey is your sample a viscous liquid that is your sample and your standard is sodium chloride solution prepared in water so when you are using water as your standard reference it will get a nebul okay because it is very low viscous the amount of sodium atoms present in that flame or plasma okay which is which is going to be used for absorbance that quantity will be very high as compared when honey is uh converted to into nebula a sperm okay now same can be for two different uh, two different solutions having different surface tensions okay 
like for uh, can i give example suppose it is a soap solution and uh, the solution is normal water so the droplet size in the soap solution because of the surface tension will be very small and the evaporation process and conversion to atomization will be very fast in terms of soap solution as compared to normal water okay so you need to match the composition of the reference and the sample as possible next the pointer is not moving okay so chemical type of non spectral if a sample contains pc compound with the analyte that is not completely decomposed by energy available in the flame then chemical interferences do it now refractory elements such as titanium tungsten zirconium molybdenum aluminium may combine with oxygen to form thermal oxides this we have in terms of flame also that there are oxide formation which is very stable so analysis of how to overcome this analysis of such elements can be carried out at higher temperatures using nitrox oxide acetylene flame now this combination nitrox oxide and acetylene produces very high temperature instead of air acetylene to provide higher dissociation energy so this was the same solution used in flame also alternatively an excess of another element or compound can be added jaise jab potassium sodium tha to humne potassium add kiya tha for example calcium in presence of phosphate produces stable calcium phosphate which reduces absorption due to calcium ion if an excess of lanthanum is added it forms thermally stable compound with phosphate and calcium is free for absorption third part ionization this ionization is exactly same as ionization in flame so i am not going to explain this uh okay. application of atomic absorption spectroscopy we discuss it as we progressed so it is qualitative and quantitative both applications related to drug compounds estimation of zinc in insulin preparation oil creams and in calamine calcium in number of calcium salts lead in calcium carbonate and also impurity in number of chemical salts that have been reported now atomic absorption spectroscopy is very widely used in uh, metallurgy alloy and in organic analysis almost all important metals have been analyzed using atomic absorption spectroscopy it is specially useful to analyze ionic metal elements in blood saliva urine samples like sodium potassium magnesium calcium and other body fluids then to detect very heavy metals in herbal drugs and synthetic drugs to estimate metal elements in the food industry to estimate lead in petroleum product now coming to the applications of flame photometry you can see this chart over here in our college we are using sodium and potassium filters so it is it has got qualitative applications used for determination of alkali and alkaline earth metals elements can be detected visually by the color of the flame this you have done in your organic spotting also in first year different elements present in the sample gives out different colors but here you are identifying those based on the specific wavelength in the flame photometer with filter or monochromator of separate radiation with the characteristic of the different metals are used if the radiation of the correct wavelength is detected it will indicate the presence of that metal simple if the wavelength is present characteristic metal is present okay. table gives the detail which is given over there continuing notification it is done by determining concentration of various alkali and alkaline earth metal it is done by two method calibration curve method and internal standard method now both these methods calibration method i think you must have studied before also prepare different concentrations and in prepare a calibration curve then you take the sample observe its absorption interpolate then internal standard method is in the sample you are going to add a quantity of the standard and first you will take the reading for standard only then add plus your sample you subtract standard plus sample ka reading from from standard plus sample ka reading from only standard ka reading you are will get is only sample correct and that's it students we are done with this chapter